tomorrow, um, having done this, I hope you'll have fun with this problem 1.12, which is like Oscar and his dog or something like that. Uh, and it should be an interesting thing if you haven't done that kind of stuff before. Um, so um, now we're, I guess, I guess we've sort of talked about the interesting things that are in chapter one, so I thought that it would be good to move on to uh, chapter two, since you all already sort of had some discrete um, exposure to discrete probability. Um, that's not to say that we're not going to continue to do some discrete probability in here, but I think the, the interesting thing about random variables is that um, before we were doing things like, oh, let's you know, circle some events, and that's, that's our notion of an event in a discrete probabil probabilistic system, um, the notion um, that you have to deal with in terms of random variables is the notion that I'd like to um, group a bunch of events but by doing it in a more, um, what's it, like it's a formal way by like assigning a particular number to it. And it's, it's a, you know, kind of a, a nice thing that, you know, is if, if I create a function that takes a set of events or, you know, a set of input values and it, and it creates a new function, I'm sorry, a new value, and that that's, and that for events that are equal, I mean, the events that are, that, that I want to call of type A, that those numbers are equal, it allows you some more flexibility in, um, in, in the kinds of problems you can solve or things that you can model. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, and, and I think the other thing is, is that to note is that you can deal with this in a discrete or continuous way. Um, and so let me just talk about one example, which is um, uh, Let's say that there's this random variable r, which um, is equal to the number of uh, heads in three um, flips of a coin that um, uh, has, I guess we can just say that, that is, uh, has uh, probability p equals one half of showing up just to make this e this easy. Um, so how might I ha someone have a suggestion as how I might go out figuring out um, you know what the possible values for that are and what the probabilities for those values are? What would be these like one method method methodology for doing that? One of those trees and okay. So there Let's say that we'll start with that h sub n notation and t sub n notation for different throws. There's h1 is on the first throw um, and t1 on the second throw. Um, uh, h2, um, t2, h2, t2, and H3, T3, H3, T3, um, H3, T3, and um, 3, T3. And that basically what that ends up being is, is that we get H1, H2, H3, H1, H2, or sorry, H2, T3. Um, H1, T2, H3, H1, um, H1, T2, T3. So then we, we're now on the second row, which is T1, H2, H3, T1, H2, um, T3, T1, T1, um, T2. H3, T3. Okay, and you know the probabilities, they're all equally likely, so there's, uh, you know, the, the probability of any of these is um, 1 8th. Um, so we can just say P of um, X, Y, Z is um, 1 8th. Um, and so who can tell me what the values of R are here? One, two, or just for this row. So that's three. Oh, okay. So that's three. 
This is two, 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 one, two, one, one, zero. Okay. So um, basically, our random variable looks like, uh, and we can just add a line. It looks like zero, uh, one, two, and three. And the likelihood of any particular one is basically we just find the ones that are similar. So for three, it's one eighth because of that. For two, it's three eighths. For one, it's three eighths. And for zero, it's um, one eighth. And you, know, you, you probably could have predicted that too because of the symmetry in the problem that this would be symmetric about that axis. Um, so all right, so so this thing right here is a one-dimensional representation of, I guess, what you'd call, if you said, let's, you know, let's figure out what the y-axis is for this thing and put, put these things up, you'd call this a PMF, which is a probability mass function where the mass is sort of the value of the, the probability. And it's very similar. This, this probability mass function is, you know, has the same properties since we're grouping events um, as the probability measure space that we're talking about. So you get the two things like, um, the, and the way we talk about PMFs is, in this case, PR of R sub 0. So this would be R, um, and these would be the R sub zeros, and, and this would be P of R of R sub 0. Um, let's see, that that, that uh, what are you going to say about that? I mean, that, that basically, that that's that's the, the PMF for this. And, uh, Why do you use the word mass? What's that? Um, I th I don't know if there's any particular, I don't know, do you, like, I think it's just a nice analogy between this and, like, uh, solid uh, center, of I mean, like, when you do expected values and things like that, like, if you're looking at um, center of masses and things like that, it's it's um, probably a likened analogy, I guess, except that everything's normalized by one. Well, you could also say it's one. analog to the continuous, given that right. in the continuous there's no mass right. in any one point. Right, that's right. So that, so that, right, so that when you're trying to deal with, um, a continuous system or one where um, you've got masses at a particular point like you do it deal with in <coughs> physics uh, you would you deal with them in sort of the same way so I think that's a good point um so what was I gonna say so all oh right so this so the next thing is is that you know this thing has some properties like uh, you know this is less than or equal to one and it's greater than or equal to zero um, and it's also the case so I mean and, and I guess that um, and it's also the case that the sum over r sub 0 of p sub r of r sub 0, that has to equal 1, just like the sum of all the probabilities of a set of events, which is basically saying the same thing, is equal to 1. Um, so, uh, you know, what you, you can also, you know, do stuff like, you know, with the sample space, uh, if I told you that uh, the value of r was 2, um, who could tell me what the, what, um, what, who could tell me how to figure out what the what the likelihood is, or so what's the probability that the first thing came up heads, and how would how'd you figure that out? You have an idea. Two. Oh. Okay. The the sample space is are the things with twos. Right. And each is. You look and you can see that two two of those. Okay. Come up with heads and the other doesn't. Right. So it's two. So the probability, since they're equally likely, is. You know, one third or one, sorry, one eighth plus one eighth over one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, which is equal to one or sorry, two thirds. Um, let's see. So then, uh, I guess the, the I guess sort of the last thing I wanted to finish up with here today was. Um, I guess we kind of did this on the board, so. Um, and that's this notion of an expected value and a variance. Um, and that gets back to what we were talking about, the masses and things like that. And, that, and, and these are tools that l help you figure out, um, like, I'd call them features, is, is one way you could look at them. And people sort of, what? Oh. No, no, oh. I can't see it on the screen. Oh, really? Um, so, so like a feature, like if I describe to you something like what's the expected value of uh, this particular function, meaning this probability mass function, you'd have some idea of where its center of mass was. 